안녕하십니까. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We will now uh, start the uh, day two of the Social Enterprise Leaders Forum 2021. My name is uh, Rayong Nan, today's MC. Uh, this year's forum is being held with the uh, theme of changing the world with solidarity and cooperation, an era of transition and the future of social economy. And uh, we have just started day two of the forum. On day one, we have listened to the keynote presentations of Professor Mohamed Yunus, uh, the uh, Nobel Peace Laureate and founder of Grameen Bank, and Professor Kim Yong Jin of Sokong University, and uh, presentations by speakers on partnership between the public sector, the private sector, the civil society, and consumers. I'd like to once again uh, thank uh, your support and interest uh, in our forum yesterday. And I'd like to ask for your uh, participation uh, today as well. Today, we have prepared the uh, stories of social enterprises uh, who are overcoming so the crisis with solidarity and cooperation. Uh, before introducing the speakers, uh, I'd like to make a uh, housekeeping announcement. Uh, today, we are having uh, this event 100% uh, online, uh, broadcast live on the uh, YouTube channel of the uh, Korea Social Enterprise Promotion Agency. Uh, the viewers today uh, have been selected uh, in advance uh, based on their application. Uh, if you can ask your questions or make comments, uh, if you raise your hand in the uh, Q&A uh, part of the talk concert today. And you can also uh, leave your questions or comments in the uh, chat box on uh, YouTube. And we'll make sure that your comments and Questions will be delivered to the speakers in the Q&A part. And uh, we have provided uh, some rewards uh, for active users uh, and viewers who have participated in uh, discussion online. Now, we're going to listen to the stories of social enterprises overcoming crisis with solidarity and cooperation. I'd like to now introduce today's speakers who will share their insights with us. They are joining us online. And uh, when I introduce them one uh, by one, please welcome them with a big round of applause. First of all, we have Mr. Kil Hyun Jung, a researcher uh, at the uh, Korea uh, Labor Research Institute. Welcome, Mr. Kill. You see all the uh, viewers all welcoming you. And now I'm going to introduce our speakers joining us online. First, we have Mr. Marcus Watson, uh, manager at Backtrack Works. Please welcome Mr. Watson with a big round of applause. Thank you. Next, uh, we have uh, Mr. Lee Moon Soo, the uh, chairperson of the Youth Moon uh, Social Cooperative. Good afternoon, Mr. Uh, Lee. I see your warm uh, greetings. Next, we have uh, Mr. Lee Cho Ryong, the CEO of Kemp. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ms. Lee. I welcome you all. Uh, also, uh, warmly welcome by our viewers. Next, uh, we have Ms. Uh, Amy Ortera-Tanataya, the finance director of Local Alike, joining us online as well. Uh, do we have her? I hope we could exchange greetings with her. And it seems uh, she is now uh, connecting uh, online uh, to the uh, Zoom platform. So we'll wait for her. Oh, it seems uh, she has just joined us. That's great. Next, let me uh, introduce our 30 uh, viewers 
joining us online. Good afternoon. I welcome you. Are you are the uh, protagonist of today's event? Uh, it seems that you are all ready to share your uh, comments and questions. So uh, today uh, we'll have a discussion uh, with uh, many social economic practitioners uh, who are creating changes in our society with their businesses. So uh, today everyone uh, is joining online except myself and the moderator next to me. Now we'll start uh, the talk concert. Let me now pass the microphone to uh, Dr. Gil Hyun Jung, who will be moderating uh, the talk. Good afternoon. I am Ki Hyun Jung, Research Fellow of Korea Labor Institute. Today, we're going to have a talk concert uh, under the theme of the stories of social enterprises of overcoming crisis through solidarity and cooperation. Even before the COVID-19, there had been social issues which is which are aggravating after co the COVID-19, and it's very hard to find a solution with existing solutions. So we have invited four speakers to talk about these issues. Um, so today, I will, I'm going to ask the four speakers to talk about uh, their businesses each, and I'm going to throw some keywords to you for our further discussions. First, I would like to ask Mr. Marcus Watson from Backtrack Works to introduce yourself briefly and also talk about uh, your business, how uh, you have come to start your business, your vision, and the outcome so far. Please. Mr. Rustin, please go ahead. Mr. Rustin, can you hear me? Hi, I'm Marcus Watson, and I'm the executive manager who um, established uh, Backtrack Works. We are a social enterprise based in New South Wales of Australia, and we work with uh, vulnerable young people, and we provide them with training and jobs in the uh, agriculture and the construction and fabrication sectors. In January 2020, we launched a disaster recovery effort in the wake of the devastating 2019 bushfires, which destroyed more than 18 million hectares of land across Australia. Over the following 18 months, we mobilised teams of young people across northern New South Wales and worked on over 81 properties for farmers. And I would like to show you now just a clip of a small town that we assisted called Torrington in northern New South Wales. They had had bushfires devastate their town and had no assistance for more than six months from the government and were waiting for someone to help them. Could you play the video now? All our boundary fence and all our internal fences burnt out. Walking around amongst everything that was just burnt to the cinder it was just demoralising, depressing. A lot of people weren't coping because you couldn't see where we were going to go because we couldn't find any help to help. When these guys turned up, we thought, oh, yeah, this is good. These are just a whole lot of words. But and now, after the backtrack boys have been here, the morale has lifted because of the fencing they've done. They stayed, they did their hard time, really helped the village get back on its feet. They've done an enormous amount of help for all sorts of landholders, whether they be small village blocks right up to uh, larger landholders within the area. The War oh. Memorial Park for Anzac Day, they have these blokes come in and assist us with mowing and uh, clean up the park and have it ready for that day is really great. They've done the, the road boundary fence in such a manner that um, I really couldn't say thanks enough and uh, certainly contributed to the morale, whole morale of the community and, and brought it right up from where it was on the bottom after the fires. So. And then the virus started, so you know, people were a bit worried, but you've all been doing the right thing. We stayed in isolation. They've been absolutely brilliant in our village. The village actually feels like it's actually noticed again and being remembered. This has helped immensely yeah. here in such a great manner. Marvellous bunch of boys. Uh, it was good to have some 
input in the village from ground roots. They're brilliant. Those boys are absolutely brilliant. So that was just a short video to show one of the towns that we mobilised teams to assist farmers. As I mentioned, there was over 18 million hectares of land damaged across Australia. And in our region, we were just able to make an impact on around 100 and, oh, sorry, on 13 regions or about 80 farms where we mobilised teams to go out to work with farmers on the ground to assist them to get back on their feet. Many of them had lost houses, they'd lost their boundary fences, and they just needed a hand to ensure they could get their businesses back on track. But firstly, I just want to mention the types of young people that we work with in our teams. The young people we work with, and they are predominantly young men, um, have left school early and they have no low educational attainment and no formal skills to get them into jobs. The important thing we do with these young people is we like to teach them about generosity. And we like to provide activities where they can give back to the community. This disaster relief was an opportunity for us to partner with philanthropic supporters and government supporters and get out and allow young people to be able to give back to the farmers who had already been doing it tough through long periods of drought, who were facing COVID lockdowns and now had their fences burnt down. Many of the farmers, like you can see in that video, were elderly and were unable to get onto the properties and do the repairs who were needed to get their farms back into business. That project went for 18 months and we were able to employ 29 young people for that period on those jobs. The key component for us was to link in with the local communities and to partner with local government bodies to ensure that we were helping the farmers that were most in need. Total operating budget for the project to date is about 2.1 million Australian dollars and that was all provided by philanthropic and government funding. At this stage our first social enterprise is beginning to move into um, replicating the model across new regions so that we can assist additional communities and train additional young people and employ them in the future. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you very much Mr Watson. Now, uh, youth uh, unemployment is a serious issue as well in Korea. So Backtrack Works uh, is helping the youth uh, to uh, stand on their feet uh, and uh, enable them to uh, help uh, develop the local communities. Such a great example. Let's move on uh, to Mr. Yi Choryong of Camp. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Yi Choryong is joining us uh, from the Philippines, uh, where he's running uh, a social enterprise uh, there, although he is a Korean. So please introduce Kemp. Good afternoon. My name is Yi Choryong, uh, the CEO of Kemp. Uh, now I'm uh, in the Philippines. So it was back in 2007. Uh, when we founded uh, a, an organization in uh, one of the poor regions uh, of the Philippines. So it's been about 15 years uh, since we lived here. So we started our operation in a poor uh, community uh, in Manila. Uh, and uh, it was in 2009. Uh, there, was, uh, there were many uh, communities hit hard uh, by a typhoon. Uh, and the uh, people affected by the typhoon were uh, moved uh, from uh, from the area uh, in Manila to a rural area called Townville, a uh, Towerville, and uh, the Towerville uh, was lacking 
uh, health uh, facilities, education, uh, or employment. Uh, so the uh, residents in Tarville uh, have requested uh, support uh, from the government many times, and we found out that uh, they uh, had a lot of needs. So we uh, went to Tarville and uh, tried to discover the needs uh, with uh, experts uh, in social economy uh, and so on uh, in partnership with the local residents. And we decided that creating employment uh, in the local community uh, is uh, our priority. And we have to improve health and education systems uh, in the community. Uh, so uh, in 2010, we founded ICTING, uh, an organization uh, that has recently transformed into a cooperative uh, that runs a sewing center uh, for mothers. And uh, with uh, ICTING, uh, the uh, mothers uh, had difficulties uh, in uh, turning up uh, in the uh, uh, workshop because they had to uh, take care of their children. So we decided to uh, run uh, schools uh, uh, as well for the children. And, and there were uh, people uh, dying uh, from uh, diseases, curable diseases, uh, because of lack of uh, health care. So uh, we established uh, a health clinic uh, for the local community. So, uh, and at the same time, uh, we decided that we have to uh, secure sustainability in the long term by establishing a social enterprise in the local community. Uh, and we found that uh, one of the uh, strongest advantages of the Philippines is agriculture. So now uh, we uh, are uh, working uh, in areas like health, uh, energy, education, farming, uh, and so on. So we have really diversified uh, our operation. And uh, this, all of these operations have been very effective in coping with the pandemic. And uh, it was important uh, that uh, the residents of the local community uh, took the lead, uh, not uh, foreigners like myself. And in the process, uh, we have developed programs in partnership uh, with a, a public uh, university specialized in health uh, in the Philippines. And uh, we have established uh, systems uh, where uh, mothers and other residents in the community uh, can uh, run uh, these organizations. Uh, and we have recently uh, successfully expanded our operation into healthy food production. And uh, we have experienced success uh, in coping with and surviving uh, despite the uh, pandemic. And uh, in this process, we are actively utilizing social economy arrangements. Thank you very much, Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee. So you uh, have faced uh, poverty, which uh, is uh, which is a chronic social uh, problem uh, for any society, and you're providing a total care uh, to a community. Thank you for sharing. Well, thank you very much, moder Mr. Moderator. So we have listened to the cases of Backtrack Works and Camp. So as we've listened to the um, presentations and the speech, um, I could see that there are lots of words of encouragement through our YouTube channel, and there are a lot of comments. Um, a lot of people are saying that the day one was also good, and they are uh, having expectations on today as well. And also, uh, t yesterday was about uh, the uh, concepts for the social enterprises. And today, uh, we'll be talking about the case studies. And that was one of the comments. And then also, all of the world are trying to solve the problems of the youth. So these were the comments that we have seen so far, um, some of them. So thank you very much. And next, I would like to uh, invite the talks of President Lee Munsu and also local alikes, uh, Amy Orutera Latara Yataya. So, first, I'd like to ask uh, Ms. Amy Orutera Latanataya from Local Alike for her talk. Uh, she's um, the 
a CFO, and she has prepared a video for us first, so let's watch it first. Before you travel, what have you got to do? Get all your work done. Read reviews. Set the dates with your friends. Read reviews. Ask for time off from work. Read reviews. Pack a bag. Read reviews. Paranoid. Read reviews. Confused. Read reviews. Freak out. Reviews, 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 reviews. If you're so done with such reviews, we have something just for you. <laughs> สบายสบายชุมชนนะคะอยู่แล้วอุ่นใจทันนี้พอพี่พามาตั้งแต่น้อย Let's go มัดบาดลิ้นจีพันจักรวรรดิจากสวนที่เอาไปกินกัน Find the best reviews from those who know their home best เก็บข้าวนี่ต้องเก็บตอนที่เขายังหลับนะคะ From a walking Wikipedia guide in each community who has been so familiar with the place เอาแหลมสักเนี่ยมันเป็นที่หลบลมหลบพายุเวลาคนจีนเดินเรือมาเป็นไงกันขึ้นมาโลดเดี๋ยวคืนนี้มานอนที่บ้านพี่นะกินแบบนี้สุขภาพดีพวกพี่กินทุกวันเลย Let's try community based tourism to gain a different travel experience explore charm of different cultures and experience an authentic way of life that can never be found elsewhere Getting surrounded by the warmth of locals throughout your journey. Besides, your money spent on community-based tourism enables the locals to become self-reliant in the long run. If you're ready, leave all reviews behind and join us to become part of local communities. Local like. Good traveling, lasting impact. They all. So as I've watched the video, I felt like I would like to go traveling right now. So I'd like to ask uh, the CFO Latanatanya to uh, introduce your business. Amy, uh, CFO from Local Like. We are a social enterprise in Thailand. Um, we uh, were found with Local Like was found with the idea of improving the quality of life of local communities using community-based tourism as a tool. Through community-based tourism and sustainable tourism activities, the local communities are empowered to be self-reliant by providing by us providing consultation and building business models to operations, marketing channels, and other travel service-related activities. As we want to make tourism a meaningful experience for travelers and locals, like in terms of income generation, economic opportunities, preservation of local wisdoms and natural preservations, and increase in cost culture understanding. So for the past nine years, we've been working with more than 160 local communities throughout the country. We created more than 500 travel routes, which then create additional income to local communities here. And um, we, um, the idea is basically we want to make sure that um, the local communities throughout the country can benefit from um, the tourism. Um, which is uh, the main part of our economy in Thailand, which is before COVID time, before uh, 2020, we, um, the tourism accounts more than about like 20% of the GDP in Thailand. So we believe that, you know, the CBT um, can be uh, part of that GDP as well, um, comparing to the mainstream tourism. Um, but then, you know, after the past 10 years, so we, we work with more than 160 communities and we have created more than like uh, 1 million uh, baht um, for some villages who have no income from tourism before. And with uh, using tourism as a tool, we were able to improve the quality of life by teaching them and need the skill to earn second income so that it can provide to their family during their downtime when they finish with their main occupation, such as farming or fishermen. Uh, and throughout tourism, you know, we also help the local tourism to feel pride of what they, of the local cultures and what they do as well. Um, but with the COVID-19, um, 
it actually was quite hard for us because everything kind of stopped um, when COVID hit in the middle, um, we'll say in the beginning of 2020. So the revenue stream for us and the local communities as well have stopped. So um, it was quite a tough time. So we, at the time, kind of thought of the new business ideas, which is if we cannot bring tourists to the local communities, we have decided that we have to bring the local communities to the public instead. So we have decided in 2020 to launch two new business ideas, which is local a lot and local a right, which is um, basically um, the local craft and local recipes. Um, so with these two new models, we were managed to um, earn um, continuous income to for us for ourselves and also to the local communities as well in Thailand um, with, with also with the help from Thai government um, with a lot of projects that we are doing um, so we are we have been receiving quite positive feedback um, from these um, two new business ideas that we launched and um, during COVID time um, so we believe that with these two new business idea, it will generate um, more additional income to the local communities as well um, throughout the country, not just tourism, but when tourism is back, the local communities can also um, have additional income from these two new business ideas that um, we created during this COVID time. Um, thank you. Uh, 네, 말씀, well, thank you very much. During the COVID-19, there have been many industries that have been suffering and tourism must have been hit hard. And so you also came up with a business idea to overcome the COVID-19 issue. So uh, maybe during the keyword discussion time, you could add on uh, that kind of uh, idea that you have come up with. So we are introducing the Asian social enterprise cases. And so the fourth of best cases will be from Youth Mungan, Youth Mungan in a cooperative of Korea. So I'd like to in invite President Lee mm -hmm. for his talk. Well, Good afternoon. I am president of Youth Mungan. I'm Imun Su. So I have come up with the idea of this cooperative. A few years ago, I have heard that a person who was uh, a youth who was living in a Kushi on a very small uh, room uh, has died from starvation and economic struggle. Korea is a very advanced country. However, there are some youth who are suffering. They don't have access even to meals and basic uh, living conditions. So I came up with the idea that we should be uh, providing meals to these uh, struggling young adults. So I've opened up a restaurant for them. And I've met many young adults in that restaurant, and I could understand what kind of struggles uh, the youth are going through. So at first, uh, I started up with a very small restaurant, but I, uh, as time went by, we have developed it into a cooperative. And now I have opened up another restaurant for them. And if uh, I have more opportunities, I try to open up more restaurants elsewhere. Of course, uh, the youth need not only meals, but also job opportunities. So I'm trying to allow this opportunity for the youth to uh, achieve their dreams. So in that process, I thought that we could provide a quality, a part-time job at the least. Because of the COVID-19, things are getting worse and even part-time jobs are drying up. So we're trying to provide uh, the part-time jobs to the youth. And 
I could see that the satisfaction rate of the part-time job, part-time workers are very high. And I'm trying to create restaurants where uh, the youth could be the owners of the restaurants for the short term while owning and operating the restaurants, the youth can think about building up their careers for the future. And in that process, the youth can uh, believe in themselves and try to pursue their dreams. So I'm at an island called Chujado, and I'm operating um, a hope project. And today uh, we are at Chujado, and we are uh, walk, having a walk or a hike around the Ule Trail. So this is the last day of our um, tour. So that's why I'm accessing online. So with this kind of project, I'm trying to provide good opportunities and good experiences to the youth. I like to advocate and encourage uh, the youth. So we are a cooperative that is working towards this end. Yes, President Moon, President Lee, thank you very much. I think you'd be very tired because you have been on the trail, but still, thank you very much for your words. And uh, this case may be a bit similar to that of uh, Marcus Watson's case, as though it was interesting in some respect. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you. So we have uh, also listened to the stories of local like and the Youth Moon Gun uh, Social Cooperative. And uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Lee Moon-soo uh, said that uh, he wants to give opportunities uh, to the youth, and that was very uh, heartwarming. And that's why I think many viewers are uh, sending uh, comments. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, moderator uh, earlier said that uh, after watching the uh, local alike video, uh, he wants to uh, go traveling. And uh, actually, I feel the same. And one of one of our viewers uh, also uh, wrote that uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, uh, ex experience that program uh, after uh, the pandemic. And there is also a comment that goes, uh, tourism uh, must have been most uh, severely hit by the pandemic, uh, but you're overcoming it uh, with uh, community-based uh, tourism, and that's a uh, great. And there is also a comment uh, on camp uh, that reads, uh, it's great to see uh, a successful outcome uh, of camp um, achieving sustainability uh, itself uh, without depending on funding from outside. So uh, I think uh, we can listen to more interesting stories and uh, uh, have interesting discussion. Uh, Yes, I think so. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, is bringing about a lot of challenges uh, for everyone. And I am curious uh, about how you are uh, coping uh, with the pandemic. And as it was earlier uh, mentioned, uh, tourism was hit hardest by the pandemic. Uh, I'd like to ask, uh, our speaker from local like about how uh, she is coping with the pandemic uh, and um, your plan uh, during and after the pandemic. Um, sorry, um, I didn't understand. <laughs> um, was that a question before? Uh, uh, okay, I'll ask the question again. So, due to the COVID-19, uh, there have been some struggles, and you have mentioned about that in your talk. Could you elaborate on what kind of struggles uh, the tourism industry or your business have gone through? COVID-19 um, 
Okay, so with the COVID-19 in 2020, when it hit us, uh, we basically, you know, because everything just stopped because of all the tourism, well, I guess around the world has stopped. So we kind of have the idea of, you know, since the local communities cannot, um, because, we could, because the tourists cannot go to the local communities, so we have to take the local communities out. So we have created new two business model, which is um, local array and local a lot, which is how we kind of overcame the crisis into uh, in 2020. Um, so with these two new business, basically we're focusing on um, the uh, developing new products, um, the local products um, to sell to the main market. Um, for example, we have developed um, this um, kind of a new uh, handicrafting, which we can give it to like adults in town um, using like a local um, cloth and to make it to some kind of a garden, which is was really popular um, to give it to um, people. And we create this um, new business model, which is we pack up all the local craft and uh, products products into like a premium gift and we sell to the corporate clients um, throughout, uh, the th throughout Thailand as well. So, you know, with this kind of new income, the local communities um, can continue to earn income um, and continue to live um, during the COVID-19 and adjust to the new normal. And um, with that, um, we have created a new two, two things um, during this COVID time. That's how we overcame this crisis. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you very much. In social economy sector, the tourism sector, a lot of uh, struggles had to be gone through. So we have been doing online or uh, online tourism as well. And also there are some kind of uh, other efforts as well. But I, as I listen to your talk, uh, your ideas are going beyond that. So you are taking care of the community as well of, of the tourism sites. So I think that was a very interesting case. Thank you very much. Second, uh, this, the same question to um, Mr. Lee Chaoryong, Camp. So uh, in the pandemic, uh, many countries uh, decided to uh, have lockdown and the Philippines was one of them. So the uh, business have to uh, close down uh, and uh, the people's uh, traveling uh, was banned. So how uh, did you cope with the challenges? So uh, camp uh, experienced uh, a very serious situation that was uh, unprecedented. So uh, there was a lockdown in the Philippines, and it was very effective in uh, controlling COVID. And when you take a look at the numbers, uh, the Philippines uh, used to have the largest outbreaks uh, in Southeast Asia following Indonesia. Uh, in, uh, in the region I am now living in, uh, we uh, have had about 100 to 300 uh, deaths uh, every day. And uh, during the lockdown, all public facilities, uh, public transport, uh, businesses uh, have to shut down. Uh, and only one member uh, of a family was allowed to go out of their homes to get foods. And in uh, in a, a village like Towerville, people are poor and uh, live uh, on their daily income. And with the uh, businesses closed, uh, there was no uh, income at all uh, for these people. Uh, and until up until recently, many of these people have to just go out uh, on the streets uh, to beg for money or food. And there were many manufacturing companies uh, going bankrupt. So there was a disruption in the supply chain. Uh, and with the shopping malls closed, there was no sales channel at all. And like I said earlier, uh, we established ICTING uh, 10 years uh, ago to create employment for women. Uh, 
in the community. Uh, the name Iktin comes from the word igniting, uh, meaning uh, we want to ignite uh, the potential passion, potential skills uh, of mothers uh, in Towerville. And uh, we have seen many women uh, seeing hope uh, in uh, working uh, in the process. Uh, but so when the pandemic uh, came, our sewing center also had to close. And the mothers had to stay uh, at home, and uh, they didn't have any uh, income source. So we decided to ask for a special permit uh, to the uh, municipality because the sewing center uh, can uh, actually produce face masks and other uh, protective gears. So we were allowed uh, to resume our uh, production. Uh, but there is another problem. There was no order uh, for us. And last year, uh, COICA, uh, the uh, development agency of Korea, uh, was very active in distributing uh, protective uh, gears uh, in many countries. And uh, they decided to work with our sewing center uh, to produce face masks, uh, in other uh, protective gears. So, uh, instead of just sending uh, face masks and other protective gears from Korea to the Philippines, uh, we decided uh, to secure uh, the raw materials uh, for the production of such protective gears in our sewing center. Uh, so uh, the protective gears were produced uh, and distributed uh, to poor regions across the Philippines, as you can see uh, in the photo. And so uh, the sewing center uh, has had the opportunity uh, to continue to operate. Uh, in the, uh, this partnership was possible uh, because the sewing center uh, was uh, led by uh, mothers uh, who were equipped with the uh, necessary skills uh, to operate uh, the facility and produce face, face masks. Uh, it uh, would have been not possible if the sewing center was only uh, run by foreigners, not, not uh, Filipinos, and uh, if they had to uh, evacuate to their home country. So with this uh, success in the project for uh, protective care protect production, uh, the Ministry of Health of the Philippines uh, placed an order for us to produce um, supplies for health uh, health clinics. So this, uh, once again, uh, shows the power of the capacity building program for the locals uh, who uh, eventually develop leadership uh, to uh, continue to operate the business uh, and create jobs. Uh, and uh, they uh, say, the locals say, that they are grateful that they now have the chance to help others uh, after uh, receiving help uh, from uh, people uh, of other countries. And uh, as I explained earlier, we also focus on agriculture, production, uh, processing, and storage. And as these are essential uh, businesses, uh, even in the pandemic, we received uh, special permits to operate the facility uh, and trucks to distribute the food uh, to many regions across uh, the country. And uh, we uh, had an online platform that uh, continued to uh, provide a sales channel. And uh, there was an interesting program in the Philippines uh, called 
community pantry uh, where families uh, put out the uh, foods that are not necessary for them uh, and letting anyone uh, to uh, take the food. So this program was very uh, active uh, across the country uh, and uh, we at the Swing Center decided uh, to participate uh, in the uh, community pantry program uh, as part of our efforts to give back to the community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Lee, uh, for sharing your insights. I, uh, I, I very much would uh, like to uh, listen more, uh, but due to time constraint, uh, we uh, have to uh, cut it short. So uh, I really see a story of solidarity uh, in the community, uh, across uh, the Philippines, and internationally uh, in order uh, to overcome the challenges uh, of the pandemic. Let's move on to the case of the Youth Mungang Social Co-op. Because of social distancing, uh, operating uh, restaurants and uh, private institutes or sports complex would be difficult. So people operating these uh, businesses have been struggling and uh, everyday lives cannot go on because people cannot gather. So I think uh, a lot of uh, difficulties might have been faced by a uh, youth with gun as well. So what kind of a struggle had you been going through and how did you overcome them? First, as we faced the COVID-19 outbreak, and with the disease spreading, people were fearful of uh, going to places where uh, a lot of people gather together. So apart from the government measures, people individually were reluctant to go to places where people uh, gather together. So uh, our restaurant was no exception. People coming to our restaurant had uh, dropped significantly. Um, most of the visitors, most of the clients of our restaurants were the local residents and the youth. When the COVID cases surged, the workers, so youth who were working at our restaurants were also uh, afraid. So we had to close down our restaurants many times because the workers themselves are afraid of coming to work. So we had closed down our restaurant for about 10 days in one example. And in that process, I could see that our youth were going to other restaurants that were open. So we decided to open our restaurants again. But then last year, we had closed down our restaurants three times, uh, ten, 10 days each. So. Even if we open the restaurant, the users decreased significantly. But still, um, there are frequent visitors, frequent visitors who are youth. So for them, I thought that our restaurant is very important. Because if we close down, then they will have to go to other restaurants and that will uh, be more economic burden for them. And right next to our restaurant, we are operating a common space because the youth need to uh, access, to have access to a common space where they can come together to study and meet together. But with COVID-19 outbreak, the government uh, spaces are closed down first because to prevent the spread of the disease. So many citizens do not have access to spaces where they could gather together to do some basic activities. But we have opened up a small common space for people to come. Since most of the common spaces are shut down, our space became more important. So a lot of people have uh, supported our idea, and there have been many sponsors who have supported us. So although there were difficulties, we still were able to operate our restaurant. 
So we have uh, individual sponsors, but also have corporate sponsors as well. We are trying to access and go and speak with the corporate potential uh, sponsors. Well, thank you very much. Even though there had been many difficulties, uh, you had gone through and uh, the struggles, but you have tried to overcome them. And if uh, I, I could feel what kind of uh, work you have done. Next is to Mr. Marcus Watson. So this is a bit different from uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So last year, uh, there was the uh, uh, massive wildfire in the uh, New South Wales. And uh, there were many uh, Koreans who were uh, concerned uh, about Australians. Uh, to show you some example, I brought this uh, little doll. Can you see this? This was produced by a social enterprise specialized in upcycling uh, as part of uh, its campaign uh, for uh, receiving donations uh, for the uh, uh, restoration of uh, Australia. Uh, in the last year, uh, we uh, gave away uh, these souls for participants. So I think uh, Fact Truck Boards contributed uh, to uh, restoration uh, projects uh, after the uh, wildfire. And, uh, and can you elaborate a little more uh, about uh, your contribution? Um, I couldn't understand the question, sorry. Uh, let me uh, repeat. So last year, there was wildfire, and I heard that Backtrack Wars contributed a lot uh, to the rebuilding projects after the wildfire. Can you explain more about uh, your activities uh, for the uh, rebuilding project? Uh, I might take the opportunity just to speak a little bit more about what we do as a social enterprise and, and what we've done over the last 12 months. So um, when COVID-19 hit um, our area, um, the impact that it had on us was um, not that great. Like uh, in Australia, in the regional areas, they weren't hit as hard. So we were able to continue to operate our social enterprise in the same way that we did with only operating under the restrictions that the government were putting on us. So our main focus was over the last 12 months that we um, continued to provide jobs for the young people that we work with, employment, um, paid employment and skill-based training to ensure that they had income. And we just need to make sure that we were able to social distance them uh, during that time. Um, if I was to look at um, your, um, tagline for your um, conference. I think the cooperation piece is something that was um, really valuable to us over the past 12 months. Um, key to our success over the last 12 months was that we were able to go into new communities and we were able to um, cooperate with local government and local leaders on the ground that were able to identify the farmers that were doing it the most tough, those that um, did not have income due to drought, those that were unable to access property um, and clean up their properties or clean up their fences. And we also found that we were coming across a lot of people that it, the uh, bushfire had impacted them by having an impact on their mental health. So there were many people or farmers that had um, a negative impact on their mental health from the fires. I think that they felt that they had lost hope and they couldn't see a way out to get their businesses going again. So bringing groups of young people in to work alongside these communities was an opportunity to um, rejuvenate some hope into the communities. And we found that the best way to do that was to collaborate with local governments, local businesses, um, philanthropic investment, and ensure that we were able to get businesses um, back on the ground and, and going again. Thank you very much for uh, your input. 
due to time constraint, I think we need to talk about the uh, wildfire uh, rebuilding project at the end of our discussion in the Q&A. And thank you very much for your uh, story regarding how, how you uh, overcome the challenges of the pandemic. Well, thank you very much. We have listened to the talks of the four speakers. We could uh, listen to a more concrete ideas and examples of them. So, and we can see that the online audience is actively participating in this uh, talk. And a lot of questions have been posted. And we have uh, selected two from the pre-registered comments. So I would like to pose uh, this question to you. So first question. Uh, there are people who are not participating in making changes, and some people are struggling from Corona blue or COVID blue because they are lethargic from uh, or down from feeling down from the COVID-19 outbreak. How can we uh, empower them? How can we make them muster up their courage or cheer them up? So for this question, uh, are there any speakers uh, who would like to answer this question first? I think that for this question, uh, President Lee Chol-yong from CAMP would be the right person to answer this question because he seems very passionate on this subject. So what do you think about this? How can we persuade these people? Now, looking at the situation in Korea, I found a lot of differences, actually. So many Koreans are having difficulties in running businesses, and I uh, saw a lot of those stories in the news. But the situation in the Philippines uh, is much worse. People are, cannot, you know, c get out of their homes. Uh, in uh, when rice and other uh, food are distributed to uh, households, they are placed in front of the uh, in front of the doors because they want to avoid contact. So it's about survival uh, in the Philippines. And, uh, you know, of course, I know there are difficulties among Koreans. Uh, pe there are people having to uh, close down their businesses after making a lot of investment. But uh, as people in the Philippines, there are many uh, who uh, are on the verge of death uh, in the pandemic. So please uh, have a broader view uh, of the situation. I know it's difficult, but I really hope that Koreans can remember there are uh, people in lockdowns. And I'll also think about what they can do to help them. Uh, I think it's also a way uh, to uh, to uh, uh, mitigate uh, the sufferings uh, in the pandemic and also contribute to people in the third world. Thank you very much, Mr. Lee, for your uh, input. So maybe uh, hearing the news uh, about the uh, Philippines uh, will uh, will actually relieve uh, the feelings of many Koreans, and maybe we can uh, use the feelings uh, to uh, providing more help uh, to people in the Philippines uh, and other countries who are struggling uh, even harder. And this is why we need a sense of solidarity, uh, as Mr. Lee uh, just said. So solidarity among different uh, places. Uh, will be key. Uh, will be key uh, to uh, coping with the challenges of the pandemic. Let's move on to the second question. So the question is, how uh, should we uh, co uh, cooperate and uh, work together uh, to operate a social enterprise uh, that is uh, sustainable uh, in itself? Now, this is a, a broad question, I think. Uh, if uh, any of the four speakers uh, want to answer this question, you can go first. So how can we create a stable and sustainable uh, social enterprise through partnership and cooperation? 
If there is no one who would like to go first, maybe I can ask Mr. Watson to uh, answer this question. I hope the question was uh, delivered to you. Uh, sorry, I'm just re just reading the question. 네, 아무래도 현지 uh, 네. Yes, so um, just um, you asked if we distributed uh, many things to the recovery of the forest fire. Um, the predominant work that we did was um, construction of fences, um, rural fencing for farmers in the region. So we um, would uh, purchase materials from local suppliers and um, transport them out to regional and remote properties um, to put rural fencing back up, mainly for cattle and uh, sheep for large farmers and on large properties. Um, the, the other things that we found ourselves doing was we would do small construction projects. So we rebuilt um, sheds for farmers. We rebuilt um, cattle yards for farmers. And we also built um, small pop-up kitchens and uh, food preparation areas for some property owners because they'd lost everything. Um, <coughs> Not long after the fire, there was even farmers that had um, uh, lost, um, were living in sheds, and we had to assist them by building um, short, um, small sheds and small houses that they could live in for a, for a time while they rebuilt uh, their properties. Um, other than that, we did some small garden building um, on properties also for, for property owners. 네, 답변 감사드립니다. Thank you very much for your answer. It seems uh, there uh, there are some technical issues uh, on the uh, Zoom platform. Uh, but thank you very much for answering the question regarding the uh, bushfire. And I will if we have time, uh, we would like to take more questions from the online uh, Zoom participants. So aside from the pre-registered questions, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. As I have uh, let you know, you can use the raise your hand button from the Zoom platform. And we will select some of you to raise your question ask your questions we have listened to many good cases if you have any questions regarding to that please ask your questions if you cannot find the raise your hand button you can just raise your real hand your physical hand and ask your questions so I think that yeah, you need more time to come up with your questions. So I think some people need some more time. So maybe I could ask one of you to ask your questions. I would like to first check if uh, this person has uh, accessed online. We may have Mr. Park Yong hee from Seed Plus. Mr. Park Yong hee from Seed Plus, are you on the Zoom platform? Are you here with us? Yes, I think that uh, she has just uh, left for a second. So uh, maybe we can move on to the next person. Ms. Che Ge Yong, Emma Bridge Cooperative. She's from the uh, cooperative and she's working and she's very busy, but still she left uh, some comments too. So uh, could you speak for a few minutes? I do think you are busy, but yes. You have turned on your microphone. Hello, yes, hello. So what are you up to right now? 
so we are helping the physically uh, developmentally challenged to engage in activities. So I think that uh, you are trying to understand what kind of other organizations uh, are doing so that you can relate and connect to them. So if you have any questions related to that, this is your time to ask your questions. Yes. So who can answer the question about this topic? Well, maybe we could ask uh, President Lee Moon-soo, who has started uh, from a small business in the local neighborhood. You have started from a small-sized uh, operation, but then you have expanded your business by building networks. So could you share with us your experience? Yes. yes. Well, when we are talking about business management, I'm not a connoisseur, but so I had to listen to others, those who are in uh, that business could give advice to me. So I tried to visit them and talk to them often, and I got a lot of help from those experts. Still, I'm uh, asking a lot of questions to them as well. So the social enterprise and social economy organizations should focus on the social value, make those social values known while engaging in economic activities. I think we are doing that job. I believe that each organization and each business are focusing on and pursuing good social value. So I think that should be the focus and about the question. In the social economy center, a lot of people are uh, joining in. So in those social economy centers, I think you can build more network. Uh, last year, we have begun our social cooperative, and we have uh, received training and engaged in nurturing uh, projects. But because of the COVID-19 outbreak, we uh, had very little opportunities to engage in network building. Now, with Zoom uh, platform, we could continue to meet online, but still, uh, there is a limit to what we can do by doing online. So, so there would be many enterprises, organizations, and institutions. I think we have to come together, meet together more often. The, we think that with social value, we should enter the uh, market economy or change the market economy. We are sharing value, and this has taken off as a new trend, and it's uh, spreading in the market. So I think we should continue to build solidarity and cooperation to uh, let our social value know more widely. Thank you very much for your comment. President Yi min -soo has himself started from a small business, a small restaurant, and has uh, converted it into a common space where people can come together. Thank you for your experience. And the questions from the online audience, I think a lot of people would be uh, wondering how we can build solidarity and cooperation um, to create a sound and stable social enterprise. So maybe I could ask uh, this question to Amy, uh, CFO of Local Like. Uh, I would like to ask this question again uh, in Korean and then again in English to deliver this question properly. Uh, Amy, thank you for sharing with us your uh, business cases. In order to operate the social enterprise in a sound and stable way, could you, uh, what kind of 
ways we can pursue and take. Um, sorry, your, your voice kind of lost for a minute. I couldn't hear all the questions. Can you repeat one more time? Okay, sure. I'm going to tell you slowly. <laughs> Could you please tell us in more detailed story <coughs> how to cooperate to ensure stable operation of your social enterprise business? Okay, so what we do is basically we make sure that, you know, when the launch of the new business ideas, we make sure that, you know, the real vision of the company remains still, which is to help the local communities to have better lives. So, you know, before in the past, you know, we, we use tourism as a tool to basically improve the quality of life and, you know, to find them a new way of um, revenue. But now, you know, with the COVID happened, we just basically shifted our business but we find a different way for the social, uh, for the uh, local communities to make um, different type of revenue, so that they can continue to have, you know, better quality of life. But maybe not tourism at the moment, but you know, through you know the sale of their local products or you know with the recipes, you know, um, for example, with local array, we basically um, brought a local chef from the local community to Bangkok and host and um, like kind of a dining event for the city people. So, you know, we brought, you know, through other local ingredients um, also with the local uh, chef at the same time. So the city people in Bangkok can experience the local experience without going to the local community. So that's, that's how, you know, uh, one of the things that we kind of ensure that, you know, we don't, we don't lose that connection and we can still keep the vision going, but maybe through a different ways of working with the new normal. Yeah. Thank you for your detailed answer. 네, 상세한 답변 감사드립니다. Thank you for your answer. So uh, I believe uh, it's a great uh, that uh, we have this opportunity to have uh, this uh, fruitful discussion. Uh, so now we are going to move on to taking questions from uh, YouTube. So there are many question questions on. Uh, our YouTube channel and uh, before entertaining those questions I think the speakers must have some questions uh, about other speakers so I'd like to give opportunities to our speakers to ask questions about other speakers uh, before uh, dealing with questions uh, on the YouTube. So, if you have any question uh, regarding uh, other speakers, other organizations, uh, you can ask them now. You can use uh, the uh, raise hand function. Is there uh, Imun Su? You just uh, did that. Uh, please go ahead. Yes, I have a question to uh, Executive Manager Marcus Watson. So, so uh, you are mobilizing the youth uh, in rebuilding farms, and you are uh, training them. Uh, and my question is, do they have regular employment or do they have to, uh, be, uh, or, or are they employed uh, in the short term? So that's a very specific question for Mr. Watson. So I'd like to ask Mr. Watson to answer the question before moving on to uh, next question. Can you please answer that? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, yeah, so but basically the way we work with young people is we set up a individualized plan with each young person to make sure that the employment opportunity we're providing them is tailored to what they need. So for some young people, they are looking for 
part-time work and other young people are looking for full-time work. Um, but we ensure that we tailor our response to what they're asking for and what they need. So we have young people that work full-time for us. Some have been working full-time for us for five years. Um, some work, work full-time with us for a short period of time and then move on to other um, independent employers after they've gained skills and feel confident to go and work for other employers. 예, 감사합니다. 그리고 바로 이... Thank you very much uh, for your answer. Now there is a uh, it seems uh, Mr. Watson you also had a question for the other speakers. Please go ahead. Yeah, I, I have a question for Amy. I'm interested in how you identify um, the suppliers to your business so the the businesses that are in the small towns, how how do you find them? Um, hi. So basically because with a lot of work that we do, we got our funding from the government. So we do from the start, we, we work with the local community. So the first phase of our work is basically to go into the local community to do the survey of what we they are good at. So because of, you know, we've been working with local communities for more than 10 years now. So we have quite a good database of what each community is good at because what each community is good at is not the same. So some of this community might be good at um, like this product and the other one might be good, you know, famous with the food. So we kind of, you know, basically focus on what is good for each community. And then, you know, we kind of build a database. So for example, when people want to work with the local community and they contacted us, so we look at this database and then we kind of match the kind of a demand and supply together um, and what, you know, what people need and what the local community can offer. Because a lot of time with the problem with local community is they can produce something which is really uh, meaningful and, you know, it's a local product, but they can, make a lot of stuff they're not factory so you know um, we have to make sure that the customer who want to order um, these products from local community understand that you know with the tourism we control the amount of tourists who would go into the area so they don't destroy like natural resources so we kind of want to make sure that you know the ecosystem is kind of balanced and you know make sure that everybody is um, kind of met with their needs thank you sure yeah, 감사합니다. 혹시... Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any other question uh, or if you want to have uh, any other conversation, uh, you can uh, go ahead right now. All right. I think that's it uh, for the uh, discussion among our speakers. Now, there are some uh, questions on the YouTube channel. And let me uh, take two questions. Uh, and they are all, uh, the two questions are for all four speakers. So the first question is uh, regarding the role of the government. So as you as you run your business, uh, some governments will be more supportive, and other governments uh, will be less uh, supportive, uh, focusing uh, more on autonomy of social enterprises. So, what's your relationship with the government in running your business? And if you have any. Uh, if you want any change in uh, that relationship, uh, please uh, explain. And there was another question. Uh, so many of you talked about how to cope with the challenges of the pandemic. And it seems that the COVID-19 uh, will uh, continue uh, into 2022. So we have to live with uh, the uh, coronavirus. And what are your plans for next year so again the first question uh, is about your relationship with the government and the second question is about your plans next year still in the pandemic i think you will need some time to uh, think about the answer but because of the time 
constraint I have to ask any one of you to uh, start answering right away. You can raise your hand. It seems Amy uh, wanted to answer first. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, we would like to share that um, actually for our business model, we got a lot of support from Thai government um, because of um, what uh, Thai government basically have this kind of um, um, the same um, idea already to develop um, a lot of local communities to tourism because Thai government also see this as a big um, a kind of important part of building a foundation for the business in the future. So we actually got a lot of support um, from the government as well from um, outside. So a lot of um, the projects that we have been doing, we have a lot of support from them. So we are actually quite grateful for the government support at this, especially at this time of the pandemic because you know we also believe that you know we there's also funding from the private sector but the private sectors do not have as much money um, as the government sector so with the building of the local community and foundation around the country we actually um, with a good, we have quite good relationship with our government at the moment because this is part of the grassroots um, local economy development um, this is um, kind of for us, um, it's actually quite good. And with the pandemic for the next um, couple of years, we actually look at it as, you know, we will continue, you know, doing um, the projects with the government at the same time. But we also want to build um, basically the market share with the, um, our private sectors and our true, uh, true individual customers um, with the help with our government. So uh, to answer your questions, we are actually quite grateful uh, at the moment with the, with the support from our Thai government. Uh, what about the 2022 plan uh, when we would have to live with the COVID-19 situation? Could you uh, add on to uh, your plan, the previous plan? Could you talk about the 2022 plan? <coughs> Um, for, for us, for 2022 plan, we basically um, have set up several uh, projects that we want to continue with the local communities in Thailand. We have um, worked with our government to basically develop some uh, programs to help the local communities as well to make sure that, you know, they have a different kind of skills to cope with the new normal. So, for example, um, we would go into different communities, you know, to teach them if, you know, basically right now you basically lost all the money because of the tourism stop. You have to find a new way to make living. So we would work with our government to um, develop different type of training for all the local community in Thailand. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for your answer. So I think a lot of uh, the other speakers would have their answers ready. So maybe I could point one of you. Uh, can I ask uh, Mr. Yi Chol-yong from CAMP? Could you answer on these two questions, uh, the relations with the government and your 2022 plan in the with COVID situation? Let me answer the second question first. So many people are talking about living with the, co uh, with the virus. And now it's, uh, you know, the flights are all uh, you know, blocked. So it's almost impossible for the virus to uh, come in uh, to the Philippines. And I think uh, for the time being, we won't be able to use uh, offline sales channels for the uh, uh, sewing products uh, in our uh, safe foods. So we will strengthen our online sales platform. Now, when it comes to the uh, customer base for our healthy uh, food, uh, it used to be 70% uh, Koreans uh, living in the Philippines. But uh, in the pandemic, uh, we are successfully shifting the customer base into more uh, Filipinos. So we will uh, wrap up those efforts uh, into next year. Now, the first question about the relationship with the government. So now, I 
I have been dealing with two governments, South Korean and the Philippines. Uh, I think we have a great uh, governance relationship with the Philippines uh, government in terms of legal uh, and institutional framework. Uh, uh, and the government uh, has been protecting our operation in the pandemic by issuing permits and certifications for uh, you know, uh, operating the sewing center and distributing food with trucks. Uh, but the problem is that, uh, except for the uh, Manila metropolitan government, many local governments, uh, including the one in Tarville, have uh, have a uh, small budget, uh, and maybe that's why uh, uh, the local government here is keen uh, to uh, working with us. Now, regarding the South Korean government. I hope that uh, it can more closely work with development cooperation NGOs uh, who have more and more interest in social economy. And uh, as in the case of the uh, sewing center producing face masks uh, uh, based on orders from uh, Koweka, uh, Korea uh, could continue to place orders uh, for uh, the sewing center and other social enterprises in the Philippines instead of just distributing protective gears and other uh, materials uh, to the Philippines. Uh, and now there are monitoring schemes uh, going on uh, regarding uh, the development cooperation projects. Uh, and uh, I think there is a problem. Uh, many uh, organizations on the ground say that their activities are limited due to the pandemic. Uh, however, they are still spending a lot of budget on something. And unfortunately, that's not really uh, related to helping uh, members in the local communities. So I believe that the South Korean government uh, should improve its monitoring system uh, for NGOs and development cooperation organizations uh, so that the budget uh, can be used uh, to really help uh, communities. Uh, that's also uh, uh, that's also critical to achieving the ultimate goals of social economy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lee, for your detailed answer. Now I'd like to ask Mr. Watson to answer the two questions. Thank you. Uh, firstly, uh, the government support with social enterprise. In Australia at the moment, um, there's two ways that we have been supported with social enterprise from the government. Um, the first is uh, the state government has been involved in um, like seed funding, promising um, social enterprises. So there's um, opportunities um, at various times for um, so, uh, new social enterprises or startups to pitch to government to get seed funding to get going. Uh, the other way that um, is um, quite successful for um, social enterprises in Australia at the moment is um, what is called payment by outcomes. And that is where social enterprises receive a, a government contract where they negotiate a, a financial payment once we're successful in achieving negotiated outcomes with the government. So in the case of my social enterprise, we would negotiate uh, government contracts where we would um, look at getting a payment from the government once a young person has been employed for more than a negotiated period of time. Uh, the other, um, to for the second question with regards to 2022 and COVID-19, um, our approach is that we continue to look for um, contract opportunities that um, are easy for us to practice social distancing, um, which is um, quite easy for us in the line of work that we are in because we are in big open spaces. Um, it's easy for us to um, continue on with agricultural work and we're able to manage um, social distancing with our employees and also able to adhere to you know, government regulation 
around um, distancing people in accommodation. Um, also, um, the uptake of vaccination for our young people is quite good here. I think more than 90% of our team um, are currently vaccinated. So um, we will continue with um, business as usual for next year at this stage. Thank you. Last not but uh, last but not least, uh, Mr. Lee Munsu, please answer the two questions. Yes. So we are located at Songbuk uh, District in Seoul. It's a municipality, and the municipality of Songbuk District uh, provides a lot of support for us, and um, they view us from a very positive perspective. So we are trying to see what kind of things we can do within this uh, local area, and we are uh, discussing with the municipality. And I think that we will get more support next year from the municipality. That's what I expect. So I'm very thankful. So next year, I have a plan to uh, expand our restaurants, increase in number. So. That means we can repay the love and interest that we've received from the youth to the youth. So we are going to expand our restaurant network and continue on our youth program. So with these efforts, we are going to present our social value to the citizens and build solidarity with our sponsors. Thank you very much. Well, I think there are many common denominators among the four speakers' uh, ideas. The government support is a very important aspect in uh, the operation of social enterprises and uh, all have a very bright prospect for the 2022. Uh, even though we are still suffering from the pandemic, uh, you all have a very uh, positive outlook for 2022. I hope that your plans all uh, pan out, and I hope that your social enterprises could be operated well in next year as well. So I think there are some questions from the audience participating from the Zoom platform, and I think we are seeing more comments from YouTube as well. Could you uh, share them with us too? Yes, thank you. Uh, the online participants have asked a lot of questions to us, uh, and they think they try to seize the opportunity to ask the questions. Ms. Im Myung Hee from the Zoom platform is here. She's from the cooperative Kaga Ho Ho. It's a. Uh, could you ask your question? Yes, I have question to uh, two speakers. To one, to uh, Executive Marcus Watson. Uh, so um, you said that uh, at BT Works, uh, there are uh, youth uh, who had left schools uh, early. And uh, I'd like to know uh, what that means. So in Korea, there are some uh, teenagers uh, who uh, dropped out of schools uh, or who, who were uh, treated as delinquent juveniles. So uh, are those the youth you are working with? The second question goes for Mr. Im Eun Soo. Uh, now, my, many young people in Korea uh, actually uh, give up uh, on you know getting a job, even uh, before applying for uh, one. You know, and uh, there are some uh, young people uh, who just expect that they can uh, they can you know uh, succeed. Uh, they can uh, work at uh, their parents' uh, businesses. And they just uh, uh, don't spend their time in a productive way. Uh, so I uh, wonder how many young people uh, are involved in uh, your uh, cooperative. 
I want to like uh, I'd like to know the numbers. And how many young people are you, uh, you know, nurturing uh, who uh, can uh, enter society uh, as a productive member? Thank you very much, Ms. Lee Myung-hee, for your question. So the first question was for Mr. Watson uh, of uh, Backtrack Works. So Mr. Watson, can you answer the question now? Yes. So. Um, as you've explained that you have delinquent um, youth in Korea, um, we are talking about the same kind of young people. So these are young people, um, we call them disengaged youth, and this is young people that have um, stopped attending school. Some of them have stopped attending school as young as 12 years old when they come to us. And um, when they come to us when they are 12 years old, we uh, have a alternate education program that we work with them until they are of a working age. And in Australia, you can start working when you are 14 and nine months. So 100% of the young people we work with have um, stopped attending school or education uh, at a very young age and are disengaged. In Korea and in Australia as well, these are the issues that we could face. Um, there would be students who would leave school early. However, um, there are opportunities provided by uh, this social enterprise of Mr. Marcus Watson. Thank you for your answer. And I would like to listen to the next answer by President Lee Moon Soo. Well, uh, the youth are not participating as members of the cooperative. They are uh, working uh, at our restaurants and they are operating many youth programs that we uh, provide. So the youth are participating as either part-time workers. There are four uh, young adults who are participating as part-timers and there have been many others as well. Uh, we have not been operating this for a long time, so we I don't think that we can present you with a visible outcome. But I can say that the young adults working at our restaurants are very satisfied with the job. And maybe this may be my own idea, but I think they are more confident than before after working at our restaurant. So, uh, well, the feedback from the youth have been very positive so far. They try to uh, continue to work at our restaurants. Maybe that could be a good thing or and a bad thing together. Uh, aside from that, well, this working at a restaurant could be called a cultural activity. And that's what the youth say among themselves. So I think a lot of experience could be shared. And I could hear a lot of cases from the youth and their stories as well. So we are doing the Youth um, Hope Road project. We have started it two years ago last year. We skipped because of the COVID-19 outbreak. But uh, this year, we thought that we still need to do it. So we had uh, come together to Jeju to uh, walk around the Ole Trail. We are now very beaten down because uh, physically because of walking a long distance. But we're very happy together. And I think that this will leave a very good memory among all of us who have participated in this walking project. Uh, the youth are uh, having becoming more confident and they are seeing more hope through this program. So we are joining in with the youth together. Well, thank you very much for your answer. Uh, I would like to thank Ms. Im Young-hee for asking your question th through the Zoom platform. 
And we also have many YouTube participants. And as we are moving towards the end of the program, we are seeing more comments coming up. For example, the uh, finding the talent uh, would be something that we have to focus more on as we go on. And in camp, uh, the work is outsourced to other uh, local residents, and that could help improve uh, the carbon footprint issues as well while sharing jobs. So I think the YouTube participants are also very impressed. And because of the COVID-19 outbreak, uh, we have been struggling, but we have come up with new ideas. And also, I think we have come up with a new idea of solidarity, a good idea of solidarity and the importance of solidarity. And related to the youth issues, a lot of comments have come up as well. We have restaurants where a youth can come and work. Uh, and this idea is very good. So I'd like to thank uh, President Yimun Su for coming up with this business idea. And then next comment, I think this was a very good opportunity uh, to listen to uh, the stories of the youth and the business concept around the youth. And the, uh, the Hope Road project is very uh, interesting. So these were the comments that we have received from uh, the YouTube channel. We don't have a lot of opportunities to listen to uh, what the youth are going through. So I think this is a very good opportunity to listen to what the youth are uh, doing. I hope that this kind of forum could be held more often. And then two more comments I would like to introduce to you. Uh, through education and training, uh, the residents can improve themselves. I think. Well, I have started this project two years ago. It was a struggle, but still, I think it was a very good opportunity to build solidarity. So that was the uh, personal experience of uh, the commentator. And last but not least, another comment. I think this is a student who is learning about a social enterprise, uh, he or she said. Although we are facing the COVID-19 outbreak, so social enterprises are trying to build more solidarity and cooperation. And I, we could listen to the success story. So I think it was a very good opportunity. So. Uh,接下来我们就是慢慢的分享了一些什么。저의마음도좀많은변화가있었던것같거든요。좌장님도짧게한말씀만네부탁을드려도될까요?예,저도그렇습니다。일단,어,제말씀드리기전에오늘토크
Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Kiel. I believe uh, uh, everyone uh, watching this talk concert uh, would agree uh, with uh, what you have just said. I'd like to uh, once again uh, thank the viewers uh, for sharing your comments and questions. And as I uh, explained earlier, uh, we have prepared some rewards uh, for the viewers. Uh, in uh, the uh, organizers uh, will contact uh, the uh, viewers uh, who will receive uh, rewards from us. And uh, please uh, make sure that you answer uh, the survey uh, we have just uh, uh, sent you. Uh, and thanks to the uh, interest and participation of so many audience, uh, we have successfully uh, 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 discussed uh, various issues uh, yesterday and uh, today. And uh, I believe that with solidarity and cooperation, uh, we have all discovered hope in uh, this year's forum. Now we are faced with many challenges, the climate crisis uh, and uh, social uh, issues in many societies. I believe uh, we will be able to overcome these challenges if we work together. Uh, let me quote one uh, comment from a viewer uh, before I wrap up. It goes, Today, I developed a broader understanding on social economy, and that's the largest gift uh, from this year's forum. I deeply agree uh, with this comment, and I uh, believe that this, uh, this year's forum will be remembered uh, for a long time. Uh, we will come back with a better uh, program next year. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank the speakers the moderator and the viewers for uh, their participation. I wish you health and happiness. Thank you.